And then he gets appointed by the World Health Organization to the investigating um, team that goes to Wuhan. Now this is, you know, he's best friends with Xi Zheng Li, the head of the key lab in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. You know, he goes on karaoke trips with them that he boasts about on social media. Um, and in December 2019, as the virus is about to come to light, he's boasting on a, uh, a, a, an interview, rather like the one we're doing now, about the work they can do on these viruses at Wuhan as a result of this technology. Now, he's never replied to one of my emails, one of my attempts to contact him. He won't do an interview with someone like me. This is just not acceptable. <laughs> you know, if anyone knows what's going on, um, what might have gone on, if, and could be really helpful, it would be him. I'll give you one example of an exchange I had with with uh, his organization, the EcoHealth Alliance, on social media. Um, in the middle of 2021, a French team announced that they'd found a very similar virus in Laos. Now this turned out to be very slightly more similar than RATG13, the one they found in Yunnan. And they found it in a horseshoe bat in, in Laos, in a, in a cave. And so a lot of people said, that's really interesting, because that lets the lab off the hook because the Wuhan Institute of Virology wasn't in Laos sampling these bats. Well, now there's a, there's a bit of a complication here, which is that for most of its genome, this virus is not more similar than RATG13, but for the spike gene, it, it's, it's so much more similar that it just tips it over the edge. It's 96.8% the same instead of 96.2%. So you can argue about whether it's more closely related. In most of its genome it's not, but in some of its genome it is, and overall it is just more closely related. So, But leave that on one side. Um, I then uh, wrote something saying, well, actually this doesn't let the Wuhan Institute of Virology off the hook because we know that the EcoHealth Alliance were collecting viruses from bats in Laos and were sending them to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Whereupon the EcoHealth Alliance spokesman comes, appears on Twitter, for the first time responding to something I've said, <laughs> and says, uh, you're lying, we didn't do that. So I reply with a copy of a entry in a genome database showing a virus from a bat collected in Laos, deposited at the Wuhan Institute of Virology by the EcoHealth Alliance. Saying, then how do you explain this entry in this genetic database? It's not a relevant virus, it's a different virus, but that's not the point. You know, it shows they have, they have been sending viruses from Laos to Wuhan, which is a long way away, by the way. You know, again, it's another thousand miles or something. Uh, and it's a different country, um, after all. And, um, Deathly silence. And, they, and I've challenged them every three months. I send them another reminder. You still haven't answered that question. How come I can find this if you say you didn't collect any viruses in Laos? So, you know, this is the, the EcoHealth Alliance is still doing this work. Just a couple of months ago, Peter Daszak was in a bat cave in Thailand collecting more virus samples. It's still being funded, richly funded, by the US government. As a citizen, you know, who's lost friends in this pandemic, I find that insulting. You know, at the very least, come forward, tell us what you know, open up your books, be as cooperative as you can, uh, and uh, answer questions about what exactly went on. And we're not getting that still. Yeah, and, and it's a very good reason to do this just to find the answers to something, like you said, caused 10 million people to die. But the unspoken piece is, what's going to happen in the future? And it can be much, much, much worse, depending on statistics or whatever they cook up in the lab. And to know that that's continuing to go on, maybe more so now, <laughs> because it's obvious that it can be well, gotten away with. For me, there are three reasons why we need to investigate this very, very thoroughly. Um, the first is, as you say, 10 million people are dead. We owe it to them to find out how. And you wouldn't, if, the, you know, if 10 million people died in a nuclear accident, you'd say, well, it's probably better if we don't find out how it happened. Um, the second reason is because we want to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, and it's very important to know. You know. If this came out of a lab, then we need to know 
what we should be doing to um, regulate virology experiments in a different way to make sure it can't happen again. If it came out as a result of somebody shoveling bat guano in a cave, then we need to know that the bat guano trade is not safe. If it came out of somebody rearing uh, palm civets or bamboo rats uh, in a place and, uh, you know, uh, storing them in a place where bats live, then we need to know that that's not safe. If it came out of somebody cutting down a forest and the bats had nowhere to go, so they moved into a town and infected people, that's not safe. You know, it's, that's why it's important, so that we know what, where these... Now, of course there are other risks still than the one we ran in 2019, but we do need to know what that one was. And the third reason is because bad actors are watching this episode and they're saying, wow, we can bring the world economy to a shuddering halt with an infection uh, and it doesn't even have to be very lethal. It just has to be very infectious. And um, what's more, when we do so, we won't necessarily get blamed. The World Health Organization will show up and say, well, we don't really know how it happened. It's probably something to do with a frozen lobster. I mean, Kim Jong-un is th seriously enjoying this, thinking he might do that. And Al-Qaeda, and who else? You know, so the bioterrorism angle on this is not unimportant. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal. And I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.